Good morning and welcome. 800 951 to Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group. Don't forget the website at allamericangold.com. How you doing out there? Happy Thursday. So, so many things to talk about. We, we've got uh, the Dow Jones Industrials going to the woodshed. Down over a thousand points now for the week as the trade war with China kicking back in. If you listen here, you're not surprised. I I'm wrong. I make mistakes. I do. I'm not perfect. I know that's a shocker uh, because I think I'm perfect. You just ask my wife; she'll tell you. But I'm wrong. I make mistakes. But there's a but in there. But I'm usually only wrong for a little while. In other words, uh, I'm right. It just takes the stock market and the idiots that go out on TV a little while to actually figure out what's going to happen. I've been saying for several years, this is exactly where we were going to end up. China doesn't view trade the way we do. I don't know why that's even difficult for anybody to understand. But then they sit there and they try to tell you, I hear it every day now, every morning. You know, and I get up early. And I turn on the idiot box. It's just what I do. All right, and, I, and I'm going back and forth. You know what I need? Because I need, like, multiple TVs. So I could have, you know, I could have CNBC on, Fox on, Bloomberg on, right? You know, the and you see, you know, and I made fun of it before. They got all of these channels trying to brainwash you. Right? You're an idiot if you're not in the stock market. If you don't have a 401k and all these other things. And they're trying to tell you that. China's going to give in. They say it every day. They need us more than we need them. Uh, that's not true. I want it to be true. Trust me, I want it to be true. But it's not. See, we have this problem. It's called the debt market. It's called the national debt. We, we have a spending problem. We have a debt problem. We have a problem that really is the equivalent, and, and, and you know, uh, especially a heroin addict. If you know somebody, and, and I think everybody does, knows at least one person, if not more, that has battled this. It's horrible. It's almost impossible to get out of it, to get off of it. And this is our national debt. It's $22.3 trillion. Plus the Fed's got $4 trillion plus, 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 plus. Every day, on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, every day, well, we take the weekends off, the United States has to sell. But they've got to finance the debt. Now they talk about, hey, we're going to add a trillion dollars to the deficit this year. That's a lie. Notice how I didn't say uh, anything like, oh, well, that's kind of true or that's a half truth. No, that's just a flat out lie. It's not the number. The number is going to be, I don't know, 1.6, 1.7, somewhere in that area. Let's let's round up. It's going to be about 1.7 trillion dollars. But you see, that's not all we have to sell. See, we already had <laughs> 22 trillion. Now some of it's in 
three-month bills, six-month bills, one year, two year, five, seven, ten year. So not all of it is due every year. But we know ballpark we have 1.7 trillion that we need to sell plus right now about 10 trillion of the other 22 trillion so about 12 trillion dollars worth of debt has to be sold this year right? the problem is Next year, right? It's going to be you know fourteen trillion. The year after that, seventeen trillion, and then twenty trillion. Right? The rollover just keeps getting bigger. And so every quarter or two, I I inform you, I tell you, hey, the treasury is increasing the size of the auctions, and we've got a ton of them. Right? We got I don't even know forty. 40 to 50 different auctions in a month. And, and, and I may be light on that number, but they have different kinds, right? A two-year, a five-year, a seven-year, a 10-year a, a tip, a seven-year tip, right? The inflation adjusted and this and that. And they add a billion dollars to like every one of them. Now the trade war flares up. We went from a week ago yesterday or tomorrow, a week ago tomorrow, that a deal was going to be done, you know, tomorrow, to the whole thing's falling apart. We had one of the worst auctions I've seen on Tuesday, only to be followed up by the worst auction I've ever seen. Ever. And going back to the crisis, they were bad. And, and I'm sitting here and I'm trying to connect the dots. Right? What, what happened? Especially, what made it especially concerning to me is Wall Street is falling. Which normally means you have a good debt auction because people get scared and they buy bonds. It's not happening this time. We'll talk about that next. China needs us more than we need them. Or do they? So as the trade war has heated up, We've seen a huge equity sell-off, right? Because, again, right? we shouldn't even be surprised. Right? This was, and part of why, you know, Wall Street is such a, you know, and I guess I don't want to call it a Ponzi scheme, but it really is, right? Because if you don't have the money coming in, right, it goes to zero. And so much of this rally, and people don't realize this, so much of the volume today is buybacks. Matter of fact, uh, the, the Dow kind of what did it hit a record, I think, last week. Everybody was selling the internals. All the, all the buy was coming from the buybacks, all of it. And then you get what happens is every once in a while we get slapped with a reality and boom, here comes the big fall. Well, if we had just priced it in the reality, this wouldn't have happened. Of course, but then again, we couldn't say it's at a record high. So normally, when the Dow sells off, you know, we had a 470-something down point down day on Tuesday. The bond auctions will be really strong because right? people are nervous, right, and they get out of stocks and go to bonds. Right, that's the old Wall Street rules. By the way, it's another rule you're going to see go by the wayside. This is what happens when you have debts that aren't payable. 
So the U.S. Treasury on Tuesday, they had a May coupon issuance, $38 billion of three-year notes. You start thinking about the size of these things, right? This is just one auction. They they had multiple auctions that day. This one was $38 billion, and they do this every day. Traders were were wondering with today's sharp equity sell-off if they would see the normal big flight to safety. They didn't. And in fact, the $38 billion three-year paper, right, in three years, that's not that long in, in, in terms. So normally, these are good auctions. You know, two years and below, really good, but three years, not, not that long. It was about as ugly of an auction as we've seen in years. And again, with a big sell-off in equities. Starting at the top, We saw the lowest yields since early January. That's a concern. The tail of the auction was even a bigger concern. And when you see them talk about tail, that's that's a technical way to describe demand. So how these auctions work, Right, everybody knows the size of the issuance well in advance, like ninety days in advance. I mean, well in advance, and everybody submits their bids. They don't know what everybody else is. Well, they're not supposed to know. Hey, I, I'm gonna, I'll take a billion of it at uh, two point two four, whatever, two point two five, and what? our country does is we want to take the bids that are best for America. Right? In other words, we want to pay the least amount of interest. Right? That's that's how these auctions work. And so that's why they don't want to disclose, right? They want to make, you know, they want to get the best deal. When you have a long tail, that means two things. Number one, demand is weak. And number two, they're taking bids that are what we would say are more costly to the country. Right? So, so in other words, the, the, uh, the buyers want the United States. Hey, you're going to have to pay a premium. Right? You're going to have to pay a premium. So this is an auction where we had a long tail, which meant demand was not good. The bid-to-cover ratio was 2.48. What does that mean? Well, that simply means the auction was $38 billion. Well, it's incredible. Just a $38 billion auction, and they only had $94 billion worth of bids. The vast majority of those bids were high premium bids. That number, by the way, way, way down. Way down. I mean, the the three-year auctions used to routinely bring three and a half, bid to covers of three, seven, three, six, three, five. The last couple of years, they've been in the, the high twos, like 28, 27. This one was down to 248. But inside of it, there's three types of bidders. Indirect bidders, those are foreign governments. This was the most surprising number in the internals. They own they took less than 38% of the auction. That was down from almost 43% the month before and well below the almost 50% that foreigners 
normally had been taking down. So think about that. 50%, half, down to almost a third. This is how quickly, and of course I'm thinking, wow, somebody big didn't come. And, I, and you know, obviously, who is it? And I think it's pretty simple, right? It's probably China didn't show up. Direct bidders. These are, uh, you know, the guys out there with the the ones that get paid by the government to do the auctions, right? They had to take 20% of the auction. It's the most they've had to take in years. Another not good sign. So that was Tuesday. Yesterday. And, and by the way, I haven't heard anybody talk about it anywhere. As far as like on the idiot box, nobody's saying a word. They all want to tell you, don't worry. Listen, now, I don't know if we need to worry or not. Right? Well, I'm actually, I'm, that's actually not true. We do need to worry. I just, is this the start of the end? I don't know if this is the start or if this is just, hey, don't mess with us. So we had a terrible auction Tuesday. This is what they said about yesterday's auction. There is only one word to describe the auction of $27 billion of 10-year notes. Disastrous is the word they used. Sparking immediate speculation that China simply decided not to show up for today's budget deficit funding operations. Excuse me? The 10-year auction was ugly from top to bottom. The tail was huge. 1.4 basis points, the biggest tail that we've seen in years. Right, remember, tail signals demand. Nobody wanted to give the government good terms. For the government to finally sell all $27 billion of it, they had to keep the bribe going. Then they said, by the way, the, di uh, the disappointing reception, the bad tale, that's one thing. The internals were far worse than that. There is a number I've never seen. I've never, ever, ever seen any U.S. debt auction with a bid to cover anywhere close to 2%. To to two. The bid to cover hit a low of 2.17. That essentially means for every every dollar we wanted to sell, there was only two dollars worth of bids. This was a almost a half of a point fall from the average. So somebody huge didn't come. They said besides the lowest bid to cover going back over a decade or more, 2.17, people speculated that China simply bailed out. Foreign authorities or foreign officials, which traditionally do dominate this auction. Now, this is an auction. These are 10-year note, right? These are high, long-term. Only two people buy these notes. Foreign governments and annuities, right? Your insurance companies. That's it. Fell from normally, normally foreigners buy between 67 and 75 percent of these 10-year auctions. 
They barely bought half. 53% was all that they bought. The lowest going back for, again, years. The, the collapse of the what they call the indirect bidders, dealers were, fo- were forced to hold double what they normally would hold. Normally, dealers only get, get stuck with less than 20% of these, right? And then they, again, they, they sell them to the, the insurance companies, right? The, your annuities and all that stuff. They took down over 35% of the auction. They said it was one of the worst 10-year note auctions in history. And you turn on the idiot box, nobody's talking about it. Everybody wants you to believe that that China is going to give in and do I I don't know why. Start asking yourself, what happens next? If China doesn't show up, do other countries stop showing up? Who's going to buy it all? What does it mean for all of us? Here's what I, I, I'm, I'm telling you right now. These are numbers that can't, they can't stay this way. Could you imagine? I, I never, and, and I know it's going to come. And, and Eric has been telling me for a while now, since he's been back, Joe, it's not going to go 10 years. He, he keeps saying that. He keeps telling me, it's not going to go 10 years. Because I think, hey, we got about 10 years. What happens when there's not enough bids? Could we see an auction failure? Right, We know what they do in Japan. Right? The Bank of Japan holds everything. Take the radio news hour. We'll be back right after the break. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report. The conservative pro-family broadcast of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, a leading voice for the sanctity of life, traditional education, the Constitution, and American sovereignty. And now, from the archives of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, here is Phyllis Schlafly. University departments called women's studies are surely one of the strangest parts of any college campus. They teach that gender is not a fact of nature or biologically determined, but is socially constructed. They think that gender is a social or environmental classification that people determine by ascribing qualities of masculinity and femininity to people. Women's studies instructors consider it a fact of life that women have been subordinated and discriminated against by an unjust male patriarchy and need government action by legislatures and courts to give women their just due. At Columbia University, students who hope to be teachers are expected to adopt this radical view of American society and to attack the legitimacy of the social order. The courses dish out a running attack on capitalism and the free market system. Even at the University of Miami in Ohio, the Women's Studies Department makes clear that its courses are organized around radical feminist theory. To get a degree in women's studies, the first requirement for the senior thesis is that it must incorporate feminist perspectives. If any course syllabus promises to include critical thinking, that, of course, means criticizing men and the patriarchy. The University of Texas uses required texts that take as their starting point the patriarchal structure of society. 25 points of a student's final grade are determined by a gender journal in which students question norms about sexuality. Typical readings assigned at the University of Arizona reveal the bias of the courses, capitalist patriarchy and the case for socialist feminism, women oppression and revolution, and the radical future of liberal feminism. I hope students are not wasting their tuition dollars on this kind of ridiculous course. 
Are you a college student eager to stand up for your conservative beliefs and stand against progressive ideologies? Don't miss the 26th Annual Phyllis Schlafly Collegian Summit, June 11 to 13 in Washington, D.C. Talks, tours, and private receptions are free to students who register in advance. Go to phyllisschlafly.com and click on Collegians. That's phyllisschlafly.com. And join us again for the Phyllis Schlafly Report. 800-951-0592. It's still early in the day. The Dow's been down, oh, about 400 points. Right now it's only down about 250 because the president said that the Chinese president, President Yi, had wrote him a letter and that he was going to talk to him on the phone. Now, uh, again, I don't want to play, you know, devil's advocate here. If he wrote him a good letter, the president probably would have said so. Uh, I, I don't know, but apparently that, that, that broke about five minutes ago, and the Dow uh, rallied over 100 points on the, uh, the Chinese president sent a letter with the delegation that came over. Uh, so anyway, the Dow is down about 250. S&P's down 20. NASDAQ's down 57. Uh, gold's up uh, five bucks right now, $1,287 uh, for the last couple of days. You know, because here I'm all about value. Whatever the best deal I could get, that's what I want you to buy. And it just depends. Every day we, we do the same thing we always do. We make our calls. What you got? We check our emails, right? Because most of you know, because it's the electronic age. So uh, to be fair, the amount of phone calls we make uh, are far less today than it was 10 years ago. Most of them now just email me. Here's what we've got. Here's what we got. Here's what's going on. The U.S. $20 Liberty. This is the bread and butter coin. It is, we've sold more of these than anything else. When it comes to gold, it's not even close. I think it's the best coin when you're putting together a portfolio. There's not a better coin. Because it meets, it checks all the boxes. The premium is low. Okay, so I just told you, twelve eighty-seven is the spot price. I have them on sale at thirteen hundred and fifty dollars. Right? You don't have to, you know, when you sit there and you're like, oh, I wonder what the margins are. It's real hard when they're charging you two thousand dollars and you're looking at gold at twelve eighty-seven. Probably a good indication you're not getting a real good deal. So you already know the price is right. What happens if I want to sell it? Do I have to get 1099? Do I have to give you all my information? Do I have to give you my social security number and all that stuff? Nope. It's private. Huge factor. It's not the case when you're selling me gold bars. It's not the case if you want to sell me Maple Leafs or Krugerrand. How about if I want to trade it? Same thing. You're good to go. You want to trade gold for silver? We can do it for you. I don't recommend a lot of trades, but you know I understand the need. If you ever, if you want to do that, call me. We do it. We we do it. Uh, you know, at least once a month, somebody's trading. Hey, I think silver's going to do better. I want to trade. Okay, great. Or vice versa. So it's the most private way to own it. It's the closest gold that I can sell to spot. And the government considers them to be collectible. Why does that matter? And there's really only one reason. Because it is a loophole. 
I cannot, if you wanted to do a precious metals IRA, and we do a lot of those too, if, you're, if you want to do that, right? Because I know a lot of you, hey, I just retired. Or I have a 401k from four jobs ago. And I don't want to pay the taxes. Right, I, I, I've got I've got an IRA or a 401k. I just retired, or I got an IRA. I don't want to pay the taxes, but I'm done with Wall Street. I I, I want to have something that's not a debt. You can roll it, penalty free. Don't have to pay taxes. There is no penalty. It's a simple trustee to trustee transaction. Ever, all the gold stored at the Delaware Depository. We use Gold Star Trust. They're, they're the trustee. But you know what you can't put in there? Can't put in $20 liberties. Uh-uh. Can I put gold eagles in there? Uh-huh. How about those gold bars? Sure can. Can I put a maple leaf in there? Uh-huh. Yep. Kruger Ant, sure. You put all that stuff in there. But you can't put in the pre-1933 gold. Why? Loophole. When they confiscated gold in 1933, there was only one thing you could own that you didn't have to turn into the government. Those were coins the government determined were collectible. Period. That was the rule. And ever since the Gold Eagle Act of 1985, every single U.S. minted pre-1933 gold coin is now considered a collectible. So let's see. It's the cheapest, which cheap is good. Right, it's good. It's I can buy it for the closest to spot. It's private, and it's a collectible. It hit the trifecta. U.S. twenty dollar liberties, thirteen hundred and fifty dollars at eight hundred nine five one. 0592. That is our toll free number. I'll tell you what I'll do. If you want to buy 20 or more, I'll take it to 1340. That's, I mean, you, you just can't do any better than that. And you start thinking about all of a sudden uh, the Chinese, and I think it's them, makes sense that it was them stopped showing up to the bond auctions. We had one of the worst bond auctions in our nation's history yesterday. And think about this. Think about it. In less than 10 years, we're not going to have to sell. The 10-year the, the, the note auction was $27 billion. 10 years from today, that same auction we're probably going to have to sell, I don't know, 60, 70 billion. Never going to get paid back. Make sure you have some wealth insurance. 800 951 Take the radio news hour. We'll be back right after the break. 800 951 That is our toll free number. Listen, if you've never ordered from us before, I get it. It can be scary. Well, I'm going to call them, and and they're going to try to try to pull a fast one on me, or or they're going to make it all complicated. We don't operate that way. Listen, right now there's only two people in the office, me and Arlene. Our goal is to get you off the phone quickly. Now, obviously, if you're new and you have questions, we'll spend the time needed. But the best way in dealing with us, like today, right, when we've got an item like this, you just call up, Arlene, I want the special. That's it. That's all you got to say. 
and she'll sit there and she'll tell you. Right? Here's her big question. How many would you like? And you just tell her. If you have questions about it, we'll answer them and all those things, but you tell her. She's going to take your name and address. If you're going to pick up, she's going to take your phone number. We schedule everything by appointment. We're not a coin store in either location. Right? We have an office here in Phoenix. we got an office up in Johnstown. You can go there and pick it up. Or if you want us to ship it to you, we ship it. It's 35 bucks, flat feet. Doesn't matter. You order one coin or 500 of them, $35. Because that's just what it costs. Post office. And, we, and if we ship, we ship registered, insured U.S. mail. So you have to sign for it. Nobody's going to leave gold in your mailbox or on your front doorstep. It's not how it works. Just to give you an idea of what it is, because a lot of people have a misconception about what gold looks like. Right, they got these pictures of these big bricks, and oh my God, where am I going to put it? If you bought 20 of them today, right? Remember, at 20, I give you another, I, let's just save another $10. It's $26,800. Hundred dollars. That's the total. It's going to come in a plastic tube that's two inches tall and one inch wide. Take a your one of your wife's shoe boxes. Okay, where she you know got her high heels or whatever doesn't matter. I don't know. You could probably fit. Mm, couple million dollars worth of gold into that a roll of 20 of these you could put it in your pocket and most people wouldn't even know any self-respecting lady out there would just put it in her purse and nobody would know the difference gold is very very portable I mean you would have to have tens of millions of dollars of it before you even really thought about what would I do. One of those little uh, fire protective safes that they sell at Costco. They're like two feet by three feet. I, I, don't, I don't know the number. $50 million of gold could go in there. Maybe more. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'd love, I would love to know. <laughs> I'd love to find out. So if one of you wants to, one of you out there listening and wants to be the customer to figure that out, give me a call. 800 951 Like I said, we don't play games. There's no bait and switches here. We don't have the staff for that. We don't make outbound phone calls. So if you call up, and let's just say you said, you know what, I want to do 100000 Great. Once you've gotten your product, you are never going to hear from us again. I know it's a stupid way to run a company, but let's face it. My uncle wasn't that smart, and I'm not that smart. Your privacy is our business. We don't sell your information to anybody ever. Right? The only way anybody's going to get a record from us is with a subpoena. Other than that, it's, it's nobody's business but yours. 800-951-0592. Just call us up. Tell us you want the special, and we'll give you the really hard question of how many you would you like, and then we'll figure out if you want us to ship it or if you want to come pick it up in either one of our locations. We'll make those arrangements for you as well. It's just that simple. It's just how we do it. We've been doing it this way for almost a quarter of a century. So it must work. We must be doing something right. Here's the thing, though, too, that I'm most proud of. You know, we're a member of the Better Business Bureau. You know, we, I don't know why. And even that, you talk about inflation. I don't even talk about that. I get so mad. It's like $500 a year now just to be a member of the Better Business Bureau. We've never had a complaint. Ever. None, zero. 
You know how hard it is to do, especially with the Internet now? You don't even have to call anybody. You can just do it online. Because it's really simple. We keep our spreads super low. And, and you always get delivery. We do what we say we're going to do. Uh, we don't We don't play games. We don't tr- bait and switch you uh, and do all that other stuff. We don't sell things at high markups. Everything we do is single digits. Everything. 800-951-0592. Final segment's coming up here. And then the Eric Cedarstrom experience. Remember, uh, at the at the top of the hour, switch over to, if you're in Phoenix, switch over to 1360khnc.com, and you get two hours of the Eric Cedarstrom experience. Uh, that's coming up next. In the meantime, call the 800 number. Get you some wealth insurance. Because sooner or later, those dead auctions going to get even worse. Final segment on this Thursday, Patriot Radio News Hour, 800-951-0592. That is the toll-free number. U.S. $20 gold pieces, $1,350. Buy 20 or more, $1,340. Gold's $1,286. The Dow off the lows. The president adding some color to the letter written by President Xi, calling the letter beautiful. Speaking of beautiful, Eric Cedarstrom's in the house. Yeah, I resemble that remark. How you doing? I'm hanging in there. It's a beautiful day to be alive. Thanks for tuning in. We roll over to uh, KHNC 1360 AM at the top of the hour. You people here in Phoenix can follow me on over. We're going to talk, be talking about the trade deals. Uh, the uh, Another record on the border for illegals coming in. Biden, Biden wants to give health care to all. So if you just show up, you know, you can limp in here. You can have an arm hanging off. Don't worry. We're going to take care of you. They're setting up body shops right now along the border down in Lukeville. The tent cities are popping up everywhere. They need to get our Pio dusted off and let him go manage these he things. He knows what to do. It's crazy. He'll get the outdated baloney and all that stuff and get them all fed. Yeah, get some pink underwear. We got some left over. They got shut it down. somewhere. You imagine you're sitting in Detroit. <laughs> And a guy runs down in front of your yard in pink underwear. You're like, wow, that's globalism for you. So That would be great. I know. So, so we, we got all that going on. Bring your kids. We'll vaccinate them right now. Now the word's out. Right. Okay. The measles really did come from the illegals. You know, the illegals can't go to Germany because Germany just put into law that if you don't uh, vaccinate your kids, you get fined in Deutschmarks. So... <laughs> So we're going to talk about all that. You got Nancy Pelosi, you know, saying that we have a constitutional crisis. Everybody's kind of looking at her like, what are you talking about? So, you know, it, it, it all continues. I mean, the the Barr, uh, well, the, the Mueller dossier, and, of course, Barr, you know, going to be uh, in contempt of court here. You got just so much going on. Everything's starting to come to a head, and... It sure seems like the election is this November, but the sad thing about all of this is it's not till next November. Wow. You so. know what? That was a little <laughs> too much reality for me. I did you're right. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? So we got that much more of this? Can you believe that? So and I'm tired. I know everybody's tired. I think right now if they held a, a de facto election, all right, let's just stop. Everybody stop campaigning. Boom. Of course, you know what we could come down to, and it's a thought that I've had, that we could we could come down to uh, technocrats and roboticans. So, I mean, why not? You can have all the, the voters program their AI candidate. So now the nice thing about, you've seen the new AI, the people, they look real. Have you seen any of this artificial intelligence? They're making humans, and they look real. Go look it up on Google. Watch them talk. I mean, if they can replace... Uh, autonomous truck drivers, autonomous factory workers, autonomous everything, autonomous fast food, autonomous cars. Can't we have autonomous politicians? 
the nice thing about it, if they create it and then the voters can program them and they can have them run for election, no worry about sex scandals, no high school yearbook photos popping up. I'm here to tell you, we can have autonomous elections. So we're going to talk about all of this when we roll over to KHNC1360.com. We'll see you there. Come on over.